The information provided on this podcast is for general information purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your qualified health provider with any questions you may have. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard on this podcast. Reliance on any information provided here is solely at your own risk. Welcome. This is Birth, Baby. Your hosts are Sierra Morgan and Samantha Kelly. Sierra is a birth doula, hypnobirthing educator, and pediatric sleep consultant. Samantha is a birth doula, childbirth educator, and lactation counselor. Join us as we guide you through your options for your pregnancy, birth, and postpartum journey. All right, y'all. Today we're going to do kind of a fun episode, and we're going to talk about parent hacks. So some of the little tips and tricks that we've learned over the years that have made our lives a little bit easier. And sometimes we get asked random questions by clients and every once in a while I write them down, write down our answers for those questions. And so we're going to compile them here and talk to y'all today about things that have made our lives easier as parents. Definitely. So let's, uh, yeah, let's dive in. What do you got first on your list? So this is one that's kind of funny because if you have a home birth, this is something that they tell you to do when you're giving birth. So I always tell people, and this came up a lot when I was doing, when I do sleep training, because sometimes babies will have like a blowout diaper or whatever. And they're like, oh my gosh. And then I have to change all my sheets in the middle of the night. And then we're all so awake, um, you know, the crib mattress and all of this. So I say when making your baby's crib for the first time, or when you're changing out the sheets and washing everything, have one mattress protector then put the fitted sheet on, then put another mattress protector on and another fitted sheet. So if your baby has a blowout diaper or gets sick with a tummy bug or something in the middle of the night and they throw up, then you don't have to remake the bed when you're half asleep and trying to deal with a messy and sick baby. You just tear off the top two layers. So the fitted sheet and the mattress protector, throw that bad boy in the washing machine and oh, look, we magically have a brand new maple you know, freshly made bed, don't forget to put on the extra layer the next day so you don't have to do it again. Um, But that has been so clutch. I did this with my son and it was a game changer because the last thing you want to do at 2 a.m. is fully remake a bed and be lifting up corners and edges of a mattress. Um, And the faster you get your baby back down, you know, the less alert and awake they are, they're more likely to be able to get back to sleep. Did you ever do this with your kids, Sam? I actually do it now for my um, for my daughter while we're working on like potty training at night, like nighttime training. Um, you know, we, we're still in pull-ups most nights, but some nights she wants to wear her undies to bed and it's so much more helpful to be able to do that. And she's kind of figured it out too. She can just like pull her own sheets off. Not that she does, but oh, she nice. could. <laughs> Yeah. And I think that it's also, that gives you, you know, I love that you brought up that aspect of potty training because, you know, that is still an accident, but it's something that the kid is trying to control. And so, you know, as parents, we sometimes get a little bit nervous about letting our kids do new things. Cause we're like, that's going to make so much extra work for me. <laughs> They're mm-hmm. like, how many times a week am I going to be changing the sheets? But if it's something like that, then, you, you know, she can have the confidence and you can have the, okay, fine, like go ahead and try because they're mm-hmm. never going to do it if they don't try. Right. If we don't give them the opportunity, we want them to be able to have that little vote of confidence. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, another one that we have on the list with the similar idea is the splash mat under your kid's high chair. This is like, I I didn't figure this out until I had my second kid, but oh my gosh, it makes such a big difference. If you get like, like they they sell them on Amazon. They're like, um, like almost like a vinyl tablecloth, or you could also go get a vinyl tablecloth from the dollar store and put it down underneath the high chair. Then when you're, you know, nine month old is getting into that really fun phase where they just like to drop their food on the ground. Um, then you don't have to worry about like mopping every single night. You can just throw that tablecloth in the wash or take it outside and hose it down or whatever. Um, or in my house, we just let the dog go at it. <laughs> yeah, if you don't have dogs, like seriously, I, I don't, don't know, know how, how many people have small it. children without dogs only because they are the cleanup crew. I remember I would be at my mom's house sometimes. I'd be like, there's no dog to clean this up. This is awful. <laughs> but, um, it, this reminds me of the episode that we did with Naomi Catrone about, you know, having babies learning to eat and kind of giving them space to play with it. And she called it art class. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of this theory, right? Is you're, It's going to be dropped. It's going to be spilled. 
Um, yep. You can also, we, we are going to share some links in the show notes for different products, but this is one of those that you really could just like go to Home Depot and get the stuff that you lay down when you're printing sure. or something if you want to do it super easy. But if you're somebody who likes your aesthetic and you want it to look very pretty under your kitchen table, then we have a link for that too. Also, I use that thing for like, you know, living room, uh, living room picnics and stuff. I would just pull that out and we could sit down on, on that in the living room and have a little picnic. So I still have mine and I still use it all the time for when we want to have a special movie night or something. I love it. My son likes to have popcorn with all of these toppings. You guys, it's really weird. Like he has to have popcorn with chocolate sauce and cut up strawberries and sprinkles. And if he has gummies, he'll put gummies in. I'm like, it's a whole ordeal when we have popcorn. Mm -hmm. And he wants to have like these little special areas that will do it. And I'm like, your stuff is way too messy. We have to eat this at the table, but that's a good idea. I could make a picnic with one of those mats. Um, so another one is if your baby takes a passy, it is, it's so hard to get babies to take medicine, right? So you can cut a hole in the end of a passy that they like or a type that they like, not the one that they use or the couple that they use, but have one specifically for medicine. You can cut a tiny hole in the end of it and you can put the medicine if it's one that doesn't have a closed system. Some of them have like an mm -hmm. open system. And you can put the dose of Tylenol or whatever it is in there so that when you put their pasty in and they start sucking on it, they get the uh, medicine in there. If you want to go the actual way where they have made a product that's like this, you can do yeah. that too. They have something you can buy. We're all about the cheap option when we can, but they make a product like this. So I'll link that in the show notes too. They make like a pacifier that dispenses medication. And yeah, I had one of those. Sorry. It was so nice. You did? I did. My son wouldn't take a pacifier. So, you mm. know, for those of you out there like me who one of your children won't, then sorry about your luck. You'll have to find another. Child. They also sell little bottles, like a little bottle that does the medicine too. So if That's they won't take a pass, yeah. you can do that. That's cool. Okay. Cool. Making our lives awesome. easier out here, folks. I love it. <laughs> yeah. That's and what also, this episode's all about. Yeah. And if you're, if your kid, another parent hack, if your kid doesn't take a passy or a bottle and they're just one of those, you can get those little, like the little things that come with it, the whatever they are, syringes and stick it like in the back of their cheek. If you're watching us on YouTube, you see where I'm pointing, like back of their cheek, like right in there. And then it's harder for them to spit it out because they can't get their tongue on it. And they'll normally swallow it a lot easier. At least some of it, right? Some of it, more of it, more of it. You might get half a <laughs> dose. <laughs> we'll take it. Um, another really great one is when you are pumping to store your breast milk, when you are um, freezing the breast milk, freeze it flat instead of like standing up. I also did not figure this one out. Actually, I never figured this one out. I, I saw a client do it once and I was like, oh my God, that's the most genius thing I've ever seen. Freeze them flat. And then once they're frozen, you can stand them up and put them in, you know, in the little bin and you, they're taking up a lot less room and you're using the whole space of the bag. Um, they do have, um, they do have like storage systems that you can do that with, or you can also just get like a cardboard box from like your 12 pack of Dr. Pepper and store it in there. And then you can organize them, you know, by date and all of that stuff. However, you're choosing to organize, you can have them all organized in there by that date. So it's easy to just pull it out and they're taking up a lot less room. Um, I know like sometimes I see p pictures of people's like freezers with all of their like crazy amounts of breast milk especially if you're like an overproducer or something and it's like just an entire freezer full top to bottom of breast milk and this would maybe make that a little bit easier my type a personality can't handle the videos and pictures that i see where it's like a freezer full maybe like you know like a chest freezer and they're just like haphazardly thrown in there like mm -hmm. i can't you guys it gives me so much things i'm like we should organize those what about the dates what ones were at night and what ones were in the morning do you know that the ones at night have more melatonin in them you should give your baby them at night i can't so remember when i said in one of those episodes that i think i have postpartum anxiety i think that that right there i just showed you i couldn't have handled mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. um, we're going to get into some stuff when your kids are a little bit older. So, you know, people joke that you don't need toys. You just need Tupperware. You know, kids just want to play with all the stuff that you already have. Embrace it. So if you get mm -hmm. a box from Amazon or something that has a big, it's a big delivery box, give your kiddo some crayons, put them inside or put the box on its side so they can crawl in there and let them color on that thing. Mm -hmm. You don't you know, to break it down right away or, you know, moms, we, do we really break them down or we just like throw them in the garage so that our husbands can break them down? Oh, is that just me? Uh, but I you can let them never. color on it. My husband, if you're listening, I don't ever do that. 
there was a video my husband sent me on Instagram one time and it was um, a mom with her little girl at the top of their stairs in the garage throwing boxes into the garage and it said I'm training her for being a wife one day <laughs> <laughs> like yeah that's me um so yeah you know use those boxes use that stuff that comes in that you're just gonna throw away or break down anyway you can absolutely let your kids have fun with those or make a fort or whatever i know you're really good at that Samantha. i wasn't always as good at that oh yeah we got i don't even know what it was we got like some giant boxes like in the very beginning of covid lockdown and i think with those sat in the middle of my living room for probably three or four months and that was all my kids ever played with we would like put blankets on them and they were a four and i cut a hole out of it so it was like a car it's a whole thing they love those things i think that they were my, my son was definitely furious when i finally ended up throwing them away because they had you know snacks and milk and whatever else like covering the boxes but it was their masterpiece oh that is amazing. the only problem you guys if you let them draw on these things and it's going to be like the artwork that gets sent home from school where you're like what am i supposed to do with it um, uh -huh, so which we have a we have a hack on that you want to share your genius hack on that what was my hack on that for the boxes that we did this summer what? Oh, yes. That's not even on our list today, I don't think. It's not, yes. but we got to so share it. So we made, both of us had sons going into kindergarten. So I saw this little thing online and it was like a, it was probably a Pinterest thing. I'm usually mm -hmm. a Pinterest fail, but this one was pretty straightforward. And you get like a file box and you put in a bunch of little file holders or yeah, file folders. And you just put the dates on or the grades on them. So you can start with pre-K. Um, I still had some stuff for pre-K, so I did add that in, even though we were done with pre-K. Mm -hmm. And then kinder, first grade, so-and-so. And so then I would just put like my favorite things in that kinder section. And so that kind of makes me whittle it down and not keep everything, like if it's way too big to fit. But also for the things that are too big, I take a picture and then I save that in a folder. So I mean, he has had some really cool little things that he's drawn already, surprisingly. And I don't want to throw them away, because I want to be able to look back at them, but you can even do take a picture, throw the original away, and then get those photos printed out and you can frame them and put them on the wall mm -hmm. or put them in your binder folder yeah. thing like we made. Um, and then it helps you just keep the important things as your kids get older. Yeah. And then you can keep like, you know, uh, report cards and all of that stuff yeah. in there too, to hold on to for, for the future. And then someday I'll just hand my kid that box when they move out and say, this is your problem to deal with now. Thanks. Bye. That's the thing. That is the thing. I'm like, what am I saving all of this for? Maybe my son's <laughs> wife will want to look at it one day, you know, but my sweet mother-in-law who I just adore is a hoarder. And I would say that to her face. And maybe if she listens to this, she will laugh. Um, but she has brought us so many boxes of stuff. I'm always like, are you driving or flying? Because if she's driving, I know I'm about to get stuff from my son's childhood. Mm -hmm. And it is precious to look at, but it is like, well, what do you do with it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. That'll be fun to look at someday when they're like, you know, graduating from high school and we can lay all that stuff out at their high school graduation parties or something. I don't know. Or maybe we'll yeah, forget about it. I have no idea. But for now, it makes me And then happy. they'll try to set it on fire. Like, Probably. Yeah, well, That's fine. Don't That's fine. Um, another one that we have is have rotating boxes of toys to switch out every few weeks rather than having all the toys out at the same time. And here's why this is so helpful because our kids have so much stuff. Both of us have just, I, I think that our other part-time job is trying to organize all of our kids crap. So if we can have some boxes of toys to just kind of rotate through, and this was especially helpful when they were littler because they would have like you know, their, their toys and they would play with these, you know, five favorite things all the time. And then the rest of it, they would just get bored with and they still do it. But especially when they're littler, they would get bored with it. And then if I could bring out like, oh, okay, here's, you know, the week two of toys. And this is another one that I was probably a lot better at during like COVID lockdown than I am now, but it was really helpful because then it was like, oh yeah, these things are really fun and exciting again. And I haven't played with this train track in like weeks and it's just the best thing ever. And then, you know, they get bored of it. Nope. Okay. It's time to put that box away and go, 
you know, get the other stuff out. Um, I think maybe as they get older, it gets a little bit harder because then they're like, where is this toy, mom? Why are you ruining my life? Yes. And I, I am kind of, you know, I've said a million times I'm the type A mom. So it kind of kills me to not have it all organized. And I love having it in bins. So I thought that putting it in bins in the playroom would be good. And I have this little system and they're organized. But my son is good at it. But when his friends come over, it is a nightmare. When we started, when you started saying this one, I was like, mm, this is a do as I say, not as I do moment. Because my game room right now is a disaster area. And there's Legos everywhere. By the way, when Legos come on the scene, forget it. Um, but there's Legos everywhere. And I don't even want to open that door because I'm just going to end up sitting there for an hour organizing it. Not for anybody else. The kids don't care, but I care. So yeah, if you have it in bins, they're going to dump them. Um, have a playroom with doors on it so you can close it and don't have to look at it. <laughs> Mine has doors on it, but then they want to go in there and play and I see it and it's giving me stress. Mine has it's, glass it's doors, my problem. so it's not helpful in the slightest. Oh, you can true. see it all. Yes, and it's right by yes, the yes, entrance yes. of my house. So if my playroom is a mess, which it always is, I'm just like, hey, this this is the life Embrace we live. It. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be older one day and we'll miss the mess. That's what people say at least. I'll, yeah. I'll believe that when I see it. Yeah. So another one that I thought was really cool, and I wish that I had known about this one when um, my son was learning, or even my daughter 14 years ago. Well, she wasn't learning to put her shoes on 14 years ago, but they're learning left from right. And it's they want to get their own shoes on. They want to be independent. And it's hard for them to figure out which shoe is like. And some of them, it's not so obvious. It's like a very little edge on the inside of the foot to be able mm -hmm. to tell which foot it goes on. So I saw somebody put animal stickers, like they would just take normal animal stickers, cut them in half, and then like the front of the panda was on the right-hand side and the back was on the left-hand side. And you could tell, you know, mm -hmm. they could tell how to put it together. It doesn't matter which way it's facing. I thought that was so cool. And then when I was looking yeah. up ideas of examples of this to put in the show notes, I found that they actually make these. <laughs> so somebody Genius. decided to create stickers where it's like a face. So half of the face on one side, half of the face on the other side, and that helps kiddos know which way to put their shoes on, which is super cool. I might be buying that for my little four-year-old who is learning that and consistently has her shoes on the wrong feet. Like every single time we put our shoes on, they're on the wrong feet. So might, uh, might invest in that little hack. Oh, she doesn't care at all. But then she's like, my feet hurt. Like, yeah, of course exactly. they do. <laughs> yeah. Um, another kind of fun one is buy or make like a shirt with the graduating class year um with on the you can say you know like class of 20 whatever what are they even going to be 34 or something 2028 oh my god yeah um yeah so anyone no that's my daughter now? is 2028 20, that's four years from now it was 2028 20, four years from what now year also. is it Anyways. even is it not like 2010 i don't know what year it is yeah i know no it's not it's fine. Um, okay, so anyways, you buy a shirt with, you know, class of 20 whatever on the front, and then you can have spots on the back for each grade's handprint. So uh, each summer, they'll put their little handprint on it right before school starts, and then you'll get to see this kind of progression of it, and you can take a picture of them in that shirt every year, um, you know, buy it large, so that way when they're a senior in high school, they can wear it and it'll fit them. And then you can have those really sweet little pictures. Um, there's a lot of different variations of this. You can also do, you know, like I, I've, you know, there's the um, first day of school kindergarten, like plaque that you can hold and do that sort of thing. That's what I do in my house. Um, or there's like the, um, I've seen some people get the Dr. Seuss books, the, um, all the places you'll go and they'll have all yep. their teachers sign them. That's like just the sweetest thing ever. I don't know how well that would work once they get to be a little bit older, but they have a lot of teachers y'all. They get to have a lot of teachers one day. Yeah. Um, my daughter's in eighth like, grade and I think she has right. five or six. Yeah. You're not, yeah. I'm not tracking down all those teachers. <laughs> no. And you're, and then your kid's going to be like old enough where they're embarrassed if you're doing that. But I will tell you every once in a while, like some of you are going to be listening to this. You're like, crap, I already have a second grader and a newborn, but like, oh, I don't, I didn't get to do this with a second grader. Just, it's fine. Don't worry about it. But I am so like, I just got lucky that I found out about this cute little uh, class shirt thing before my daughter was in kinder. And I have one friend who has a daughter who's a year or two older than mine. And so I got mm -hmm. to kind of tack onto what she was doing. 
-hmm. And so my daughter does, she has this class of 2028 t-shirt and I got it big and it has like a little swoosh around it and it has her name in it. And then on the back, it says kinder first, second, third, and it's like rows of those. And we did, we started in kinder and the day before school, that was what we did, or two days before school. So it has time to dry. We did the handprint, by the way, put a piece of cardboard between the layers when you mm. do the handprint or else it bleeds through to the front. We made that mistake one time. <laughs> um, it didn't do that again, but it was, you know, at first she was like, oh, that's cool. The second year she thought it was annoying in first grade, apparently she, that wasn't cool anymore. Mm -hmm. it's cute because now she's excited about it like she's in eighth grade and she loves that we do this together we hang it in the back of the closet and a few days before school starts she's like mom don't forget the shirt and now we have one for my son and we do one for him and now it's like we all sit at the table and do it together and she always wanted me to paint her hand because she wanted it to be perfect and my son's like i want to paint my own hand his looks wild but that's fine he's very independent um but it, it is really fun so I, I really enjoyed doing that one with my kids. Yeah, it's a sweet one. It's just nice to have those little those little memories of them throughout the years. And, you know, even if it's something that they're going to be a senior in high school, they're going to put the shirt on and then you're going to forget it ever happened. It's still something that you get to look forward to every year when they're growing up. And it's and fun it's to do those little things. It's easy to store. Yeah. You know, that's one piece of something that you have to store. It's not like you're having to do a ton of stuff. So... Let's move on to the car. Um, do you want to tell us the first one for the car? There's so many for the car. Um, I think that, so the first one that we have on here is have a snack bag with individual portions in it. If you have ever ridden in a car with any <laughs> child or honestly me, because also I am a car snacker, <laughs> um, you need snacks galore. They're going to start screaming for snacks when you are, you know, 30 minutes away from your location. And by the time you get there, they'll be full on hangry. So have snacks in the car with individual portions on it. Um, anybody who is not having your kids eat in the car, I, you're, you're an alien and I don't understand you. Um, my car is a disaster and you know what, disaster. it's fine. My husband goes and vacuums it for me and <laughs> that's how we live our lives. But uh have individual portioned snacks and i recommend having those individual portioned snacks up front with you so that when the kids start screaming you can just like toss it back at them i used to have like a little tote in the back of my car with all of our like car snacks and wipes and all these different things and i very quickly realized i cannot reach it in the trunk of my car so i need them up at the front mm -hmm. um yeah, I'm frugal. And so I like refuse to buy prepackaged goldfish or anything like that because I just, I am, I'm frugal. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do a little, yeah, except Probably. that I'm putting them in Ziplocs. Um, have to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could get your reusable snack bag, but, um, I just refill those little bags and I'll mm -hmm. do individual portions of goldfish and, you know, you know, peanut butter pretzels or whatever. And it used to be that I would go, oh, would you like blah, 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 when my son was hungry or my daughter was hungry. And now I'm just like, here's the bag. <laughs> just like, shove the tote with all of the things in it. Mm -hmm. um, but God, it's such a, like, a sanity saver because they are, they're always freaking hungry in the car and mm -hmm. having tiny, like small portions that they can eat just to like hold them over until you get mm -hmm. where you're going. If clutch. you're in Texas, like we are though, you got to be really mindful oh, yeah. about what you're putting in there because granola bars mm -hmm. are not going to make it. Fruit snacks apparently melt. Who knew? I gave oh, my kids yeah. some fruit snacks the other day and they were all like gooey, nasty, gross. And she came home gooey, nasty, gross. So fruit snacks mm -hmm. don't vibe in Texas heat. So I love that she still ate them. Good. Oh, I love she that could, she was like, I'm she could not <laughs> one giant. It was basically like a jello shot. It's fine. <laughs> It's so good. Okay, so this next one is one of my favorites. Um, this was actually a an accidental find for me. So I had a back scratcher in the car because my daughter brought it into the car. She was like eight. And, mm -hmm. you know, because kids be bringing stuff into your car randomly. Okay. Um, I was at a stoplight and my son was, I don't know, like nine months or something at this point and you know they're facing backward you can't really see them very well you're trying to get with the mirrors and to be able to see them and my daughter was like oh he keeps dropping his toy and like he was screaming about it right and i looked down and i saw this back scratcher that she had brought in but it telescopes and it has this little claw at the end of it right because it's supposed to scratch mm -hmm. your back and 
they took that thing and I just started, I telescoped it to where that toy was. I was at a red light, guys. And I pulled the toy close to me and I was able to pick it up and toss it back into his car seat. And I was like, genius. So I'm going to put in the show notes, one of the ones that I like to use. Um, I think it's like a five pack or something. Just like keep one in the front, keep one or in like the back, those grabbers. keep one in the passenger seat. Those are good Oh, too. like those little pinchy guys. Yeah. Those are like awesome. trash picker upper thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. I love yep. that this one telescopes too, because that just mm -hmm. makes it so much easier to pull that little, you know, teether or whatever closer to you. Yeah. Oh yeah. A thousand percent. That one. Um, in my house right now, it is the, we're in the midst of T-ball season, uh, which means we are at T-ball, like, you know, almost every night of the week, since both of my kids are, are playing right now. We have, so between practices and everything, it's also spring right now. So it is raining every other day. And so it's muddy all the time, which means that they get back in my car and their shoes are disgusting. They're like grassy and they're muddy. And then they put their feet on my seats and my seats are nasty and muddy and the carpets are nasty and muddy. And I, I, I'm not detailing my car that often, so it's my car's nasty and muddy, except that I figured out that if you can carry around like a plastic tote um, or like a bin or something, or even just like a, you know, grocery bags, you can put their, you can make them take off their shoes before they get in the car, like sit down on the edge of the car, take off your shoes, put them in the bin, and then we don't have to deal with that. And then I can get home and set their shoes outside or wherever so that they're not getting my car all gross. Um, I save also the carpet, save the carpet. Absolutely. I also will do this like with their uniforms sometimes when they've gotten all nasty because apparently every four-year-old t-baller needs to know how to slide. And so she gets in my car covered in mud from sliding into home. <laughs> If you knew her daughter, you would just love that visual of this prissy little thing deciding she needs to learn how to slide. I love it. She knows She's how to, so good. it's fine. She hits the ball to home plate exactly and then, you know, manages to slide into home base. It's hysterical or into first base or every base, any base. They all slide everywhere. Yeah. So she'll strip off her little, her little uniform and we'll put it in the bin with the rest of the stuff. So that way her car seat doesn't get nasty because also I'm not, I'm not taking apart my car seat to clean that all the time. And when your kids are a little bit older and they're like keeping their feet on the ground, which some of them can't quite reach, but as they get a little bit older, this hack can work too. Mm -hmm. um, again, in the show notes, I'll have a link to one that I really like, but you can even use like a dish bin or something because some of them get a little bit expensive if they have the sections, but there's one that has a handle in the, it's like a caddy. It has a handle in the center and just two sides. And people generally use them as like art bins or something. But if they are just normal children that can like put their feet on the floor, normal, <laughs> normal children. Children, older children, I should say, like a real human. Um, and they can just set foot on each side in that bin. And when, since they're plastic, you can just spray it out. So they don't even necessarily have to take their shoes off. They can just step right into that bin. Right. So I really like that one. Also, on the same note, just always bring wet wipes everywhere all the time. Always. Forever. Even when your kids are too old to need wipes, carry wipes. Forever. Because their hands are going to get gross. Remember I, she just said Texas Sun doesn't vibe with the melty snacks. Mm -hmm. We still keep protein bars in the car because my kids get real hangry like their mama. And it has like a chocolate layer on the outside. Mm -hmm. And my son does not care how melty it is. He wants to eat mm -hmm. it. And so, you know, he's six. We shouldn't be having that big of messes, but sometimes we do. And so yeah. wet wipes are clutch. You've got to have the wet wipes. I've got two more that aren't on our list, but I think are equally as important. So the first one is always have a change of clothes for your entire family in yes. your car at all times. Entire family. Entire family. Yes. Uh, when, I, when my son, it was his very first Easter, so we're coming up on, I guess, six years of that, he had it was in his little sweet little outfit i was in my you know easter outfit we looked great we were at church i'm holding him on my hip and then i feel it and it's there we have oh. a blowout we're oh. all over my dress all over my kid and so then i finished church in you know my sweats and a t-shirt because that's what i had in my car but i had it otherwise i would have had to you know sit in this blowout outfit or go home or whatever that would have been so sad so uh change of clothes at all times if, if you're a doula you probably already have a change of clothes in your car all the time because that's how we live um but 
very important for the whole family. I also say that when you like travel to have a change of clothes for everybody when you travel, because there are some babies that get on a plane and then their whole system just decides to empty right then and there mm -hmm. on the plane all over you. Um, like my, uh, my nephew, that's like, what he does every time he gets on a plane he's, he's something about the pressure <laughs> something about the pressure it he releases the pressure um so that's one the second one i hold on i okay. have a six-year-old is my youngest you guys six years old and i just had to use mine the other day because yeah. um he was at grandpa's house and he had his really nice wrangler white t-shirt on because he said it had a pocket and he wanted to wear it he wore it with sweats y'all pick your battles and I all of a sudden had a doctor appointment that they were able they had a cancellation and they were able to get me in. So I was about to have to take him to a doctor appointment, which is no fun at all. But he had gotten his shirt wet at grandpa's house when he was playing with him and he was shirtless. And I all of a sudden have to go to this doctor appointment. And I, he was like, I don't have a shirt. I can't go in. And I was like, yes, you do, homie. And I had his clothes in the back. Mm -hmm. I always keep them in an individual Ziploc bag, um, mm -hmm. like a gallon size, because I take out the outfit he's getting into and I put the gross one in that Ziploc bag so yep. that if it's a blowout, you guys already have something to put it into. So it yeah. doesn't matter how old your kids are, have a change of clothes. Blowout accidents, Sprite spilled all over you in the middle of Costco. Yes, that happened to me yeah. last week. We all need outfits yeah. all the time. Um, my next one, and I, I stand by this being the most genius thing I have ever realized as a parent, so get ready for it, is a car potty. You guys, if you have a toddler, you need a car potty. My husband thought that I was absolutely insane when I said that I was putting our little travel potty in the car and I was going to be leaving it there. He's like, that's disgusting. People, like our kids don't need to pee in the car. I'm like, Do you understand how children work? We're going to walk out of Walmart and she's going to have to go right then and there at that very right second. Or we're going to no be way. driving down the highway in the middle of West Texas on our way to family. And she's going to have to go right at that very second. Or my son is going to have to go. Even six-year-olds, they can't hold it forever. You mm -hmm. know, he can, he can fire hose into the wind. She can't. So... We, well, we got the thing the little girls it's hard little boys it's so nice i had a girl first so mm -hmm. i was used to have i literally would make a potty with my arms those of you watching us on youtube yep. it was this her legs here her back here and i was literally holding her outside <laughs> yep. of the car letting her and pee. that sucks um and yeah, when they're sucks. little they may or may not actually be able to like like do that they might get some yeah, nerves like relaxing and not be able enough. to so if yeah. you have a little car potty it makes their life so much easier what i have is is it's like this playtex one and it came with these like dog poop bags basically that you put in the little thing and so then when they go i can just tie it up and oh get gosh. rid of it that way it was amazing i've run out of those bags since but i found on amazon they have them and those ones will fit over like any potty so if you have like you know the baby bajorn or whatever different so potties out there it's also genius gross. and then you can just tie it up and you know wherever you are you don't have to worry about it because it's all contained yeah. and not worrying about spilling in your car. <laughs> I love it. I love car it. potties though, you guys. I've seen a few other parents that have them. All of my friends have them because I talk about it nonstop. I think one time we were going, we were going somewhere and as we're walking by a car, there's a little girl who's in her car with her mom using her car potty. And that was when my husband was like, oh, other people do this too. <laughs> I was like, yeah, they do. And it's genius. So, you just made potties. me think of another one that's not on the list. I have a son that gets car sick. Mm -hmm. and always has and so does samantha actually we both have and we both live kind of far from each other and our kids like to play so one of our kids is going to get car sick going to visit the other kid and i there are two things that i do one i always carry a like a bucket kind of thing in my car mm -hmm. um like a kind of a tupperware that has a lid and because sometimes you know when they're really little they can't really hold a bag very well yeah. but they can hold kind of a bowl and so i would let him hold that and then as he got older i'd get those you can buy emesis bags just like if you were in labor and had to throw up and they would give you an emesis bag you can buy those on amazon and i and did and expensive. i have them they're really yeah. not um but if you're like i'm not buying anything extra and oh my gosh i just need something i don't have anything i keep gallon ziploc bags in the car oh, yeah. he can, it's big enough he can hold it he can throw up into it and then you can zip it and then you don't have to worry about it spilling into the car. So mm -hmm. I really like the Ziploc bag idea. Yeah, I love the Emesis bags. I have them at, I, I bought them initially for my birth bag when I first became a doula and I rarely use them because normally we're with Most providers that also have them but mm -hmm. i use those at home like when my kids are sick all the time because it's so much easier to hand them that little bag and i can you know put floor around 
the pillow mm -hmm. like there's one here if you need to grab it one there one there one there and they carry yeah. these around for my for my daughter it's like her emotional support mss bag if her tummy hurts she just wants to carry it <laughs> emotional support mss bag so <laughs> that's how it works in our house i you love guys, those bags kids are so weird they just are <laughs> that just reminded me of something so random that has nothing to do with a parent hack but my son you know those little like letters that they can play with in the bathtub Mm -hmm. letters and numbers in their foam and you can kind of stick them to the side but they're not sticky it's just because the water's on them yeah my son was like two he was obsessed with this one only one out of the set the purple number nine mm -hmm. and we he had to sleep with perp nine all the time that was one of his <laughs> loveys was purple nine and we had i rarely had a house cleaner but i at that point in my life was like i can't do all the things with a two-year-old so i would mm -hmm. have one come like once a month just to clean up after me a little bit and one time they moved the purple nine they nope. thought it wasn't supposed to be in the bed because why should it be mm -hmm. and oh my god we lost our minds i was calling the owner of the cleaning company like i know this is really weird but i'm gonna need you to call the I person that was nine. on my <laughs> they put purple nine Oh. It reminds me, we're just off on a bunny trail now. There was a mom That's in fine. one of our mom groups recently that was talking about a plastic carrot and how her Saw kids, that. yeah, like fight over plastic carrots. And she's like, I know this is just the weirdest thing, but the set is like a pretty common set. My kids fight over this one single carrot and I'm terrified that we're going to lose it someday. So I just need everybody. If you have plastic carrots and your kids won't care, can I please have your carrots? And I think she ended up with like, I don't even know, a dozen at least of those, oh, of those I think little it plastic ended, carrots. It was a saga. It was hilarious oh, because she kept so updating funny. it with pictures mm -hmm. of how many carrots she got. And I think it was over 20 at one point. Yeah. She's like these fucking carrots. And I get it. I, 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 I do get too. It. Kids are freaking insane, y'all. They, they love oh, carrots and, so and purple nines. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Um, If you're not a parent, you're probably not listening to this anyway. So I was going <laughs> to say, like, if you're not a parent, you'll get it one day. Okay, so just two more left. These are for kind of like outings. Um, we're going to probably do a travel tips episode eventually. By the way, if you have like great travel tips and you want to send them in, do it. And mm -hmm. we'll share them on the podcast. Mm -hmm. But one of them is there are sticky table placemats. If you've ever been to Chick-fil-A, hey, Chick-fil-A, sponsor us. Uh, <laughs> Ziploc, sponsor us. We're like saying so many products in this episode. But if you ever at Chick-fil-A, they have those little uh, placemats, the little plastic foldable ones, and they have a little strip at the top and a strip at the bottom that you pull off and it sticks to the table. They're amazing. They reduce mm -hmm. germs, but they also reduce mess. And my son didn't want plate when he was little. He wanted to just be able to like pick it up and use his little pincher grip and not have them all organized on a plate. He wanted them just on the table. So those mm -hmm. little mats were amazing. And I didn't even know for the longest that you can buy them on Amazon because what can you not even get on Amazon these days? Um, and you can just buy like a 50 pack or whatever and keep some in your diaper bag. I remember there were times that I was out and I would see another mom and be like, oh, do you want one? Like, it was like, Oprah, you get one and you get one because it, it's a game changer. And parents were always mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. Um, so I really love having those disposable table or uh, placemats. I may or may not have stolen a handful of them from Chick-fil-A when my son was little and kept them in my diaper bag. And you know what? <laughs> I probably should have bought them on Amazon, but those things changed my life. <laughs> you probably used them at other Chick-fil-A's, if we're all going to be honest, because oh, we all I know that you have like, the highest status of Chick-fil-A, uh, you know, I'm a signature points. member, you know, I work hard. <laughs> oh, it's a hard, it is hard work. It's a commitment. It is a commitment. It's great. <laughs> all right. I put um, this next one on there. I don't even know if you know what this means. I don't. Okay. I don't know what this means. Okay. A little it's a little bit country so <laughs> i used to hunt and fish a lot and um that's like something people are gonna make but you did what so if you have like a tack box like a fishing lure box where you can have them all separated into different areas you can buy one brand new and never had any fishing stuff in it and put a bunch of different snacks in there which are that it's amazing because you know kids get sick of stuff and if you're on a road trip or something they're gonna want a million different things and one thing's not going to be enough so you can put a bunch in these, I mean, there's like 18 sections or however many sections, there's one with, ones with a ton of them. And you can put a bunch of different snacks in them. Another thing that I saw that was really cool and it, it's along the same lines of um, different types of foods, but my son went to a friend's house the other day and you know, kids don't really like to try new things. 
And he mm-hmm. went to a friend's house the other day and he came home and I was like, you know, are you hungry? Because I figured he hadn't had a snack. And he's like, no, I ate at so-and-so's house. I was like, oh, what'd you have? And he goes, well, his mom had this cool plate and it had a spinner. The and charcuterie it has, snack like, plate. Yeah. It's so cool. It has like 12 sections or whatever. And she said she got it on Amazon. Of course she did. Yeah. And they would spin it and she put all different snacks and all different ones and you had to eat whatever it landed on. So it was like a mm-hmm. game that then you're trying the new food that's in there. And he tried things that he wouldn't have tried otherwise because mm-hmm. he still didn't like them, but that's okay. Um, but tried he tried them. them because they were in, you know, it was kind of fun. It was like a betting game or, you know, mm-hmm. a truth or dare of food. And yeah. uh, you spin it around and try new food. So I thought that was pretty cool. Making it into a game is a fun idea. We do charcuterie for dinner sometimes. And I just put a bunch of stuff on there that my kids may or may not eat. Um, but it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. So that's so just a this is it. Few, yeah, that's a that's a few of our favorite hacks. I don't think that's anywhere close to to all of them, but um, it's just some of the things that we've kind of kind of learned over the years. And I think something that we say sometimes on the podcast and just to people, to clients in general, is you're gonna get a lot of these sort of things. You're gonna be like, this is the only way to do it. This is the best way to do it. I've learned all of this. Um, and other than the car potty, all of these can be taken with a grain of salt, you know, do what works best for you, except for the car potty and maybe the change of clothes in the car. Uh, what do what's going to work best for you and your family. I always say with parenting, you're going to just have so much advice and opinions and everything thrown at you. So a huge part of, of parenting and keeping your sanity is just learning to, you know, take what you can from people and then let the rest go. You know, you and your family best, you know, your baby best. No one else is going to be, you know, that much smarter than you about all these different things so if something sounds like it'll work for you give it a try if it doesn't work don't do it again that's fine and when i was preparing for this episode i was like man a lot of these things have plastic in it and i know that's so taboo to everyone but you know Mm -hmm. what sometimes convenience has to win out for sanity and if you don't want to use plastic please don't that's great and please don't judge me for sometimes using plastic because it's Mm -hmm. real easy to clean um and that's just, you know, exactly what works for your family. So yeah. if you have any other ideas and you want us to, yeah, 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 for sure. If you have any other ideas and you want to send them in, we would love to do follow-up episodes on this kind of stuff with all of y'all's tips and tricks and mm-hmm. little hacks that you've found along the way. And we will talk to you next week. Bye, y'all. Thank you for joining us on Birth, baby. Thanks again to Longing for Orpheus for our music. You can look him up on Spotify. Remember to leave a review, share, and follow wherever you get your podcasts. See you next week.